here, let's say I wanted to make all of these now black. I can just pick everything and select the black color. And notice here it has my AutoCAD colors, and they're actually named AutoCAD 1, 2, 3, 4. I can make them all just black, so they're all black. We can match all the line weights to be the same, so let's do 0.25. And now if I zoom in, I can start viewing this more specifically. Let's say I want uh, the line going around this hatch to be much thicker. So you can pick that and then we can see it's something on this layer. So you can do it like that. You can click there and see did we get it. No, that was the hatch. And then here it's this. So it's actually on the red layer. So we can turn that layer off just to view it. Uh, oh, and then to the right of the eyeball is the lock. So if you click here, you're locking the layer. So the only one you can edit is the ones that aren't locked. So here I want to pick that guy. And then you can come up here and give this guy like two. And so now he's like popping forward. This line... So if you hold Alt and you click one of these, if I just click it, normal click, see left button click, let me move that for you guys so that you can see this a little better. There. Um, if you just click one time, it will do whatever this layer does, this option. If you Alt click it, it will keep that layer that way and make all the other layers the opposite of what you just did. So if I Alt click here, it will keep this one on and lock the rest. If this one was like that, I can alt click it and it will do the opposite. So see here, if I alt click on one layer, I can isolate it and only look at that layer. So that's a super quick way to do that. Um, I can pick this one and see this one is set like that. Does that know here? Oh, nice. So. There's this little window called stroke. If you don't have that one, look up here. Anytime you're missing one of these, or let's say here I had it and then I accidentally like moved it out and then I accidentally hit the X, so it's gone now, and you're like, where'd it go? I need it. You just go up here to window and then look for it here, so stroke. And then we can dock it back into here. Stroke will let you do this. The trick is you need to pick the object first and then you can, just like we could up here, you can add thickness to something. Um, if I zoom in, remember we were talking about raster versus vector? Look at how close I can get to this. And it's still super sharp, right? Um, since I'm in the corner, I'll show you these corner options. Right now it's set to this one, which is round. If you hit this one, it will like chamfer the corner off. And then this one will make it a sharp corner. So that you can change individually by object, or you can do that, like you can say, I want this whole layer to be like that. So instead of just picking one object, first you need to select the object, then you change the stroke settings. If you don't have anything, you can change these all day long, but nothing will change. And then you pick an object, and then these change to become whatever that object had. Let's see how they're changing. So um, if I wanted all the objects on this guy's layer, so he is on this layer, line work. If I click that, now I have them. I can go to stroke, zoom in, and let's make them all one. And then we can pick like that, like this. If we want the corners to be sharp, maybe we'll make them thicker. We can zoom in and out. Um, I think what I want to do is select all of them and then make this guy not the same. So right now, is that the one? No, I want this one. Which layer is that guy on? It's here. So you can do this. You freeze all of them except that guy. And here we can make him like 
four. Maybe we give this one the rounded corners. And then we click layers again, we unlock all of them. I want all of these guys to go down. Let's say I want to start adding color or adjusting these somehow. Um, let's say these are looking too thin. If you click the hatch, it, it groups the hatch together. So it's kind of neat. Um, and then I can just change this one time and I'm changing all of those lines. You can also pick that and let's say I wanted to make them dashed. If you come over here, you can click through these options and if you notice here it says dashed. If you don't see that, make sure you click here and you say show options. With that, you can click dashed and by default it's done that. But what I can do is I can add a dash and then I can control how long the, the gap will be. So I could put two. So notice it's like one to two. The gap is twice as long. And then it lets you put like four more. So if I want it to be long dash, two short dashes, and then another long dash, I can do one, two, one, one. See how now it's staggering them? And then here we could put like five, two. So now we have like that kind of dash. You can change all sorts of settings on it. If we change, see right now they look kind of like those balloon animals. So let's change it from this, which is rounded ends. Let's do straight ends. And if you do this one, they project past the edge or you can just end it right on there. Um, Let's get rid of this. And now let's make the dash like five. And maybe the gap's only, yeah, two looks good. Maybe we'll make that four. Oh yeah, you gotta select the whole thing. If you accidentally put four and then you delete the P on accident, it gets managed. So now we have that. Let's say I want to change this one, which is set like that from our CAD. Notice how it was a dashed line in CAD. And since we opened it, Illustrator is not treating this as individual little segments. If you look, I'm not sure if this one did. But oftentimes, it might be OK on this one. Oh no, it did. It recognized it. Sometimes it sees this instead of looking like one line. It's, it looks just like that, but you click it and you only grab that little piece. So it's super annoying. If you can get it like this, it allows you to change the dash and the gap. So let's say we want to do 5 and 5. And we can do that. Here is a cool one, the corner. See how it doesn't hit the corner? That's because it's just starting off wherever um, it needed to start and it will always preserve that rhythm that you gave it, five and five. If instead you tell it this, it will adjust so that it always hits the corner and you get nice corners. So see there? So maybe that dash is not fully five, but you actually hit the corner nice. So that's like another little thing you can change. Um, once we start wanting to add some color, we can pick this guy. And notice up here we have two things here. This is the stroke. The one to the left is the fill. So we can, let's just fill it yellow for now. Oh, it must be locked or something. I'm not giving me a fill. No, nope, that worked. So let's say we want a different color.
and then we can adjust this so we can make a new swatch so instead of RGB I like using HSB because it's a little easier I think to get right where you want to go the way it works is you pick the top color what you want so I think that orange look kind of cool and then this is basically how bright it is or dark and this is how close to gray you want it to be so all the way over here will be gray whereas anyway it's the right is more like intense of the color so we can do something like that and then up here you have opacity so we can tell it I don't want a stroke and then you can lower the opacity down a lot and then now I have something interesting where I want to start creating like this layering effect of the different layers um, I can put in to here uh, and sometimes if you don't want to lose kind of some of the features of one of your layers you can make copies so here what I could do is I can give this one a fill See, for some reason, I really don't like getting a fill. There we go. So now it should let me. Yep. And then that guy, we can give him. Let's put red. Oh, I guess we gotta do this. So now he's got white there. And then that guy. So you can start playing around with these as much or as little as you want. And then you get, where it gets interesting is when you start to overlap some of these effects. So let me see. Oh, let me show you this. This is a really cool trick. Let's say I don't want to lose any of this. And I just want that shape. You can pick the shape and you hit Control C or you go... Um, oh, this guy's like in a weird spot now. You can do Control C, copy this guy. I just want this. One. And if you hit Control V, it will paste it like that. But if you go up here and say Edit, Paste in Place, it will paste it right where it was. So now I can make a new layer drop that guy on it just drop this to the back now I can select this let's say I just give it no fill and I give it a color and then now I can lower the opacity of this one and see we can start to get some overlaps in our shapes and so see here it was one color here it's another color and here it's like a third color and that I think that's where really you can start getting some pretty neat collage kind of effects where you start really getting um, this to become a combination of the different things. Maybe that is like oh, like this.